This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey there guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm making my first ever response video. This being a response to the channel Natural Hypertrophy, he made a video claiming that functional training doesn't exist and my name came up. Now he's actually very polite and kind about my channel, so this isn't an angry video per se. However, I did want to make this response just because I see an awful lot of videos along this topic saying that functional training doesn't exist, functional training is a fad, functional training is going to get you injured, and obviously, as the author of Functional Training and Beyond, I personally don't agree, and I'd like to clear up what I see as functional training and just maybe remove a little bit of hate from the whole concept of functional training and help us all to get along a little bit more smoothly. So I think the issue that a lot of people have, first of all with functional training, is that the very name is taken as an attack on other people's training because if this is functional training, it kind of implies that your training isn't functional. And people tend to understandably get a little bit offended by this, especially if they spend years and years dedicated to their craft. And so they make these videos saying that basically functional training is a load of nonsense and I don't like it anyways. So that's where I think a lot of this is coming from. But I think it's a misunderstanding because that's not what functional training is saying. So one of the arguments, I'm gonna structure this video as a response to natural hypertrophy, just because that's an easy way for me to tackle all of these points. So yeah, one of the big issues that natural hypertrophy has with the whole concept of functional training, and this goes for a lot of other videos I've seen as well, is that how can a movement be functional when really every movement has a function? The classic example is that the bicep curl is very functional for a bodybuilder because bodybuilders need big biceps. Actually, the bicep curl is functional for a lot of other stuff. MMA fighters can really benefit from bicep curls for helping with the choke holds and things. At the same time, it's useful for carrying stuff, etc. But I digress. The point is that every exercise has a function, even if that function is just to look good, which is a perfectly fine thing to do. So if every movement is functional, what's the point of doing a functional exercise? At the same time, every movement is gonna make you stronger, every movement is gonna make you a bit healthier. So why muddy the water by saying that some exercises are more functional than others? And then he goes on to say that things like crawling on the ground are not actually particularly functional anyways, because when do we ever need to crawl along the ground? He says the same thing about rope climbing. When do we ever need to climb a rope? He says that to be functional, we just need to train to be healthy because all we really need to do on a daily basis is sit in an office chair. He says that obviously military personnel or athletes, they can benefit from specific training, but the whole concept of functional training as it applies to a broader population is nonsense. Again, I obviously respectfully disagree. So really functional training comes from the world of athletics and if you're going to train someone for a specific sport, you want to give them exercises that benefit them. So take the bicep curl example, you don't give a bicep curl to a sprinter because it's not really going to benefit them all that much. Instead you give them specific exercises, things like the ATG split squat, things like the barbell hip thrust, maybe weighted jump squats. All these things are going to translate better to sprinting and running and that's functional training. So functional training follows the law of specificity. It means choosing exercises that help you to achieve the functions that you want for your daily life. And in the case of a athlete or a military personnel, there's specific things that they can benefit from that they should incorporate. And often this just means including Metcon stuff. And we don't just call that golf training or running training. We call it functional training. It's just a useful term to describe that kind of training. And there are tons of highly respected functional coaches who aren't these guys standing on one leg on boasted balls. You really make a big difference. And if you give a MMA fighter a functional strength coach or you give a hockey player or anyone else, they're gonna see impressive results. So functional training, at least in that context, is certainly not pointless and it certainly does exist. I've seen it, so I know it exists. The issue with bodybuilding or powerlifting and the reason that someone might say that their exercises are functional too and why are they being left out? Well, the whole point here is that in those sports, the training is the same as the activity. You don't call bodybuilding training, bodybuilding training. You just call it bodybuilding. And so you don't call it functional training either. Same with powerlifting. You're not doing functional training for powerlifting because that just is powerlifting. The training is the same as the activity. Just like when someone plays football, you don't say, well, that's functional training for football. So it's just a matter of terminology and you shouldn't really get too hung up on that and see it as an attack it's just a useful term to describe something that doesn't really apply to bodybuilding and powerlifting because that is you know, inherently functional because it is the same thing that they're doing, if you see what I'm saying. For me, and for many people like me, functional training can sometimes mean just training for activities and functions that you want that you don't necessarily need but want because my job doesn't have to be the thing that I train for. So if I want to run faster or if I want to be able to climb a rope or I want to be able to climb up a wall just because it's fun and I enjoy it, then that's functional training for me because I want those functions. So I'm training for a function rather than for aesthetics or rather for a particular lift or just getting better at training itself. So once again, this is just a useful term to describe the thing I'm doing. 
And as I've made this channel, as it's grown, I've started bumping into you guys in the street. You've sent me more and more messages. And what I've learned is that there's lots of people out there just like me. You don't need to be able to sprint. You don't need to be able to run long distances necessarily, but you just want to be able to do it. In my case, it's because I'm inspired by superheroes. That's very apparent from my channel and from this office and from everything I talk about. And actually, again, that's something I've seen in you guys an awful lot. But it, otherwise, you might just be inspired by your favorite sports heroes, or you might just not want to be you know, confined to your desk job. You don't want that to be your whole identity. And so for many people, functional training just means doing that. Your job isn't your only function, or at least it certainly shouldn't be. If you're just training for your job uh, at home and then doing your job, that's just a miserable existence. And for me, I'd rather be training for awesome stuff so that when I'm not working, I can be sprinting around fields and jumping and doing parkour or martial arts or whatever else I'm into at that given moment. I'm actually lucky enough that my job has become that. So it doesn't really apply to me in the same way, but for loads of people, extracurricular function is still function. So it's still functional training. So again, it's just a useful term to describe that. And again, it's not an attack on anybody or saying that your exercises aren't functional. It's just because like I say, there's already a term for that. And what we're doing is training for a function because that's our main goal. But I admit this is where their waters can get a bit muddy because someone who doesn't understand functional training and you know the many different things it can mean to different people might think that yes, they need to now crawl and sprint and climb ropes so that they have those extra abilities. Whereas for the average Joe, they just wanna get fitter and stronger, they don't need this. Same as I say that the average Joe doesn't need to be a really great power lifter. Beyond a certain level of strength, they're golden. Likewise, the average Joe probably doesn't need to be a bodybuilder. So. For the average Joe, functional training means something different. This is why I coined the term super functional to describe what I like to do, because yeah, I like to train for things I don't need to be able to do. Therefore, it's not just functional, it's super functional. Uh, another term you could use for this would be extra functional. That's what I mean by super. I don't mean it's so functional, it's amazing. I mean, it's additional to your basic functions. Super can also have that meaning. Extra functional wasn't quite as marketable. That said, I can't seem to trademark super functional, so maybe extra functional could work. What do you guys think? It's a bit lame. How does functional training apply to the general population? And why are we seeing this movement? Why do we encourage people to do the same thing? I hope there's a delineation on my channel between the stuff I do that, you know, is like Batman training, just fun and awesome. And then there are the exercises that I say everybody should do. And I mean that. I think everyone can benefit from a deep squat. I think everyone can benefit from hanging, from doing mobility work, etc. And the reason for this is just that we do also benefit from getting a little bit of training for our daily lives, even if the function doesn't directly relate to what you're doing. And this is where specificity can be a little bit over applied because if you are just sitting in a desk, if you're just doing a desk job, then you might be fine for the most part, just doing a bodybuilding routine or powerlifting routine. But at some point as you get older, if you're sitting in a chair all day and you're performing those movements all day at the gym, you might find you start to get a little bit front heavy, for example, and that your shoulders start to close in, you get a bit of kyphosis. This is where something like a hang can be a fantastic way to deal with that. Likewise, you might start to notice your hips getting a little bit tight if you're always in that seated position. And this can cause pain on the lower back. It can cause an anterior pelvic tilt. So you've got that Donald Duck butt. It's just a not a good look. And whilst you might say that you don't need exercise to become better at sitting, you might need exercise to prevent the deleterious effects of continuous sitting. And I say again, this becomes more of an issue as you get older. I love bodybuilding. I started as a bodybuilder. As I got older, I started to realize that A, I wouldn't have the level of athleticism that I wanted just from that kind of training. Although I was very strong and I could do things like handstands just from bodybuilding training. But B, and more importantly, I was starting to see things like knee issues and lower back pain. I constantly put my back out and it was by integrating more functional style training that I started to combat this. If I'd allowed myself to continue going down that road, it would have built on itself and I'd have ended up with worse shoulders, worse wrist worst knees. And so just by incorporating a few functional exercises, what we consider functional exercises, again, it's just a useful term, into a bodybuilding training or a powerlifting training, you could end up preventing these things and feeling better overall. And another really classic example is if you're a powerlifter or a bodybuilder and all you do is add mass and size, then you're going to eventually find that you start to get out of breath climbing the stairs and things. And again, this is something I experienced when I was bulkier myself and not doing any cardio. And to me, that's not highly functional. You might be fine with that and that's cool. And if you can do a fantastic lift, then I would I'd take nothing away from that amazing achievement. However, for the average Joe, again, incorporating some cardio is so beneficial because it improves your energy levels. It can prevent heart problems and helps you sleep, helps you to be less stressed throughout the day, helps you look better again, if you're interested in the aesthetics. So there's just all these reasons to incorporate that as well. 
Likewise with mobility, if you can't bend over and touch the floor, you might not have issues with it now, but there's a high chance that's gonna to lead to more and more tightness over time, and eventually that could cause back pain, and then you won't be able to do the exercises that you love to do. So if you just take one of those programs and then you add in some cardio, some mobility work, etc., maybe some of these exercises, a back bridge or something like that, maybe some barbell hip thrusts, then you're gonna see your performance improve and that makes your training more functional, more functional for everyday life beyond your chosen sport. And again, this isn't an either or thing. You don't do functional training or you don't do functional training. You're just incorporating a few more functional exercises into the mixture. And the thing is a lot of people don't like doing lots of mobility stretches at the end of their workouts or they don't have time on top of their training. And this is why a lot of functional exercises incorporate these things at once. Like a one-legged Romanian deadlift. That might look funny to someone who's used to doing big lifts. You might think it's silly, but the reason it's there is because you're building your stability, your ability to balance on one leg, which can prevent yourself from falling as you get older, can improve your performance in sports. At the same time, you're training the hip hinge movement. At the same time, you're strengthening the lower back. You're doing all these things at once and therefore saving yourself some time, getting some more bang for your buck. So that's why we have a lot of these exercises. And they might not appear to immediately benefit everyday life, like crawling, for example, but crawling is great for your coordination, it's great for your core, it's great for your mobility, etc. And by doing this, all that's gonna to translate to your daily life, so you have a bit more energy, so you're less likely to get injuries and to feel stiff. And something else to remember here is that YouTube fitness really skews our view of what fitness and health and training is, because for you guys, a lot of people who are just very healthy and want to look bigger and stronger, yeah, maybe you don't feel the need for functional training yet, but for an awful lot of the population, just being able to do one pull up or just being able to not have back pain in the morning or knee pain, etc., that is their fitness goal, you know? And more people are in that camp than in the camp of being perfectly healthy and wanting to get stronger. And as you get older, you might find yourself getting into that point as well. And this is again why functional training is highly beneficial for those people. And the other thing is that whilst this might mostly be hypothetical, the truth is that you also sometimes do actually need some functional strength. A good example of this, one that I often give is if you're moving home or helping someone else to move home. You might not need to do that often, but when you do, you'll be really glad that you have that grip strength, that core strength, the rotational strength, and the capacity, the work capacity to keep going. Today I first jogged two miles to the van rental place, that's after getting very little sleep last night, and I've spent over two hours just carrying heavy ass stuff into the back of this van, which I'm about to take to the tip, into my office, into our storage unit. So, and this is where some functional strength and some functional training has really come in handy. There are plenty of other examples like this and some situations you might not expect to find yourself in. Many people just like to be prepared for anything. But for me, it's also a kind of you know, badge of honor that you can do this kind of thing without needing help. And I always thought one of the motivations for me getting strong was I never wanted to be the, the butt of that sort of joke. I didn't want people to say, you know, who's gonna help us move house? <laughs> Adam, no, I don't think so. I never wanted to be that guy. I do think that natural hypertrophy perhaps conflated some different types of training and maybe missed the point in a few areas. For example, he says he doesn't understand why functional coaches think that the pull-up is the single most functional movement out there, the single most functional lift. And I'm not sure where we got this from, because I think if you ask the most functional coaches, they'd say something like the deadlift would be more valuable. Likewise with the crawl, he says that he doesn't know why this is part of functional training. Actually, I think I am someone who's a bit responsible for introducing crawling more into functional training. Most people would associate crawling far more with the likes of Edu Portal, who is not a functional coach, he's a movement coach, he's a movement guru. And movement training is slightly different from functional training. I think it's actually very good and useful as well, and I also like to practice that, but they are slightly different. He then goes on to say that the pull-up in particular, he doesn't see the function of because you don't normally have to climb something in your daily life. And again, I'm saying that I train for functions I don't necessarily need, and that's still a form of functional training. However, I take his point that if you're just looking to get your basic functions down pat, then you don't necessarily need to climb things. And he says that you wouldn't use the kind of arched back technique that most people use when they're performing a pull-up. Well, again, if he had watched my channel a bit more, he would know that there's actually multiple approaches to the pull-up and that the one that would be recommended for its function primarily would be the tactical pull-up, whereby you would hold using your thumbs on top of the bar, you'd use a more concave, um, hollow body position and pull straight up. And this is advocated by the likes of Pavel Satsulin. And Natural Hypertrophy goes on to say that what you should be doing if you're really interested in climbing is practice climbing like a child, where you go up on one, one elbow and then the other elbow on a wall and push yourself up. He calls it like a, a bad muscle up. But again, this is actually mistaken because, you know, kids, whilst they do move particularly well, surprisingly, they aren't the shining examples we should always be following. In my recent video, I spoke to Liam Ellis from Parkour Journeys, and he showed me how to perform a climb up, which is a much more efficient way of getting up a wall. And this involves 
moving up on your hands just like this, much more like an actual muscle up. And the reason we do this is because otherwise you're gonna scuff your elbows and it's much slower. So again, there is logic to all this stuff, stuff that might look a little bit funny from the outside if you read into it more, then you're gonna get a better idea. And of course, there are good functional coaches and there are bad functional coaches, just like there are good bodybuilders and bad bodybuilders. I think natural hypertrophy in particular should know what it's like when a few bad eggs spoil the, you know, the whole fun for everybody, because as a natural bodybuilder, I'm sure he doesn't love the insinuation that bodybuilding is all about steroids and it's the only useful thing that comes from bodybuilding and that you can get a GH gut and things. Bodybuilding has tons of highly valuable applications, things like drop sets, which I love and apply to my own training and anyone I train very regularly. Um, but it's easy to look at a few bad eggs and think that's bodybuilding. Just like a few people standing on boasted balls, curling weights, it's easy to say that's functional training. Whereas actually the best functional coaches, they look into this stuff deeply. And that's partly what I find so fascinating about it. It's why I enjoy it because I love the nuances of human performance. And if we read more, then we learn things like perhaps that this type of pull-up isn't the best kind of pull-up. And for natural hypertrophy, he clearly has a very analytical mind, a very critical mind, and he's correctly assessed the value of the pull-up. And that's basically thinking like a functional trainer. That said, a regular pull-up is useful just for building a balanced physique. Because if you are using a more arched position, then you're actually building something more akin to a horizontal row because you're building all those back muscles across the back, rhomboids, traps, etc. And obviously you can't do lots of pushing and not do lots of pulling because otherwise you're going to end up with that hunched over position again. And there are many scenarios in life where you need to pull things. Natural hypertrophy actually goes on to say that we should practice opening a door. And as any of you guys know, I uh, constantly refer to exercises that are similar to pulling open a door, such as the banded rows and things like that. I'm gonna take a sidestep away from that video for a moment and respond to a general critique that I see from many other videos of functional training, which is that you don't need functional training because just training pure strength is going to give you all the other traits and properties that you need, that strength is the, the foundation of all human performance. This is something that I greatly disagree with. And I think if there was one thing that most people should do, it should be mobility, followed probably by cardio, because if you haven't got the energy to do something, then you're not gonna be able to do it. The argument for this goes that you know, if you're strong, you're strong. If you do lots of bench press and you do lots of squat and deadlift, then you're gonna be super strong and that's gonna to translate to a, a better swing with the, of the baseball bat and a better punch. However, if you want to swing a bat, then you need the transverse plane, you need to twist the body. Doing a bench press isn't gonna to translate to that because you're not using those muscles. And if you don't think that that's a thing, then surely you only need one exercise because surely just doing squats is gonna build your entire body. It doesn't work like that. You do need some specificity. You do need to choose exercises that somewhat mimic what you're gonna be doing. And then the argument comes that if you practice swinging a cable to emulate swinging a bat, you're actually gonna train yourself to not know how to swing a bat properly because you're gonna be mixing up those motor neural pathways. This again is it's just it's speculation. There's zero evidence for it. I did deep dives into this interference concept and there's nothing to imply that that's the case. There are plenty of studies. For example, we don't jump the same way as we squat, but there are studies showing definitively that squatting will improve your jump because your body is capable of taking context into account and having more than one movement pattern. It's like learning to hook isn't gonna ruin your ability to throw a straight punch and learning to write the letter B isn't gonna ruin your ability to write the letter A. It's just gonna train similar properties that you can apply on the fly. And if you wanna get really deep into this, into the works of the likes of Nikolai Bernstein, then we know that the body responds to the environment, the goal and every movement is slightly different and we actually have a very complicated, complex process that helps us to select the correct movement pattern. Every movement's slightly different, so by practicing variations of movement, we actually improve our performance. We don't muddy it. Some even go on to say that all you need is strength if you want to improve your cardio, because the argument goes that if you find it really easy to bench press 150 kilograms, then you can also find it much easier to bench press 50 kilograms, and therefore you can do more repetitions of 50 kilograms than can a endurance athlete. Well, actually, endurance is also domain specific. It affects different areas differently, so a swimmer wouldn't necessarily have great endurance as a fighter. Beyond this, you're tapping into different energy systems. It's just nonsense, I'm afraid. Take a power lifter and get them to run a mouth and they won't do as well as an endurance athlete. That's just common sense. Likewise, there are better forms of explosive and ballistic training. It's just about applying the right thing to the right thing. I think everything has a place. Yes, I think being very strong is extremely useful and it's something I'm interested in personally, but it doesn't cover every aspect of human performance. Otherwise, you know, no one would do anything else and power lifters would just be the best at every activity. Look at gymnasts. That's a form of training that applies to many other areas, not all, but many, and they train with a much wider variety of movements. I actually think the ultimate approach to fitness across the board, health that applies to everything, is to combine lots of different types of training. And this was another critique of Mr. Hypertrophy because he said he thought that by doing so, you'd be average at everything, 
and great at nothing because you can't do a program that's equally as effective at building max strength as it is at building fantastic cardio. And yeah, I agree with that. But I also think it's much better to be pretty good at everything, by which point you're already better than 90% of people who don't trade at all, and to be terrible at nothing. I'd much prefer that than to be someone who's really great at one thing and who's awful at something else. He goes on to say that humans are specialists, and I actually wholeheartedly disagree with this. I think the whole point of humans is that we're, we're generalists, and that's what's allowed us to get as far as we have, not only in the realm of trading and health and movement, but also even in terms of thinking, where a more generalist approach can help us to connect the dots across disparate ideas. I think that's one of our great strengths, and I think our training should reflect this. But again, that's my approach to functional training and yours may differ. That's not the only thing that functional training can mean. Then there are some people to say you don't need functional training because just performing the activity itself is the best way to get better at that activity. And that can be true. It really depends on the situation. For starters, it's not always convenient or practical to continuously practice your chosen sport or activity. You know, footballers can't have a match three times a day. Surfers can't go surfing all the time, so they might want to train their core outside of that. At the same time, adding a bit of resistance can be useful depending on what you're going for. So for example, if you're a martial artist who wants to throw great kicks and things to look good, that said, even then you could probably benefit from just doing some mobility work and that's functional training. Or if you want to go into MMA, then doing some metabolic conditioning or a little bit of extra strength for those holds because, you know, try and hold someone like that for a long time if all you've done is practice on your own and practice in the ring and you're gonna struggle. Practicing holding a band or something like this makes a big difference. So again, there is benefit to adding just a little bit of functional training to almost any activity. It's also worth mentioning that there are plenty of studies showing that a bunch of functional movements specifically can also help to improve athletic performance. Weighted jump squats will improve your jump height, barbell hip thrusts will improve your running speed, weighted sled pulls can improve your running speed, but it is nuanced here, and if you add too much weight, you actually slow down, and this doesn't translate to greater running speed, so you need to use about 30% of your body weight. This is another example of why just lifting really heavy weights isn't enough, why just power lifting isn't enough. And some of those critics of functional training will tell you that you don't need functional training, you don't need explosive training, because you can't change your fast twitch muscle fiber proportions all that much, so you might as well just build your max strength and have more of a pool to dip into. This once again is just, I don't know where it comes from, the studies show that you have about 50% pliability when it comes to your twitch fiber makeup, so you can change your density of fast twitch fibers by about 50%. This also varies from muscle group to muscle group, but explosiveness isn't just about fast twitch fiber anyways, it's also about things like neural drive, for instance, the myotatic stretch response, which can be trained with shock training and plyometric training. So again, there's plenty of reason to not just power lift. Likewise, powerlifting isn't going to get you into a bodybuilder's physique. A lot of people mistakenly start powerlifting because they want to get a really ripped and bulky physique and they just start doing the three big lifts. And this is the recommendation of a lot of coaches. And whilst this will pack on muscle and it will increase your overall size, it's not going to get you the kind of definition of bulky muscles that you'd get from bodybuilding. There's a reason that bodybuilding exists. Powerlifting is great. I think it's a fantastic way to build a lot of strength. It can improve your mobility even. It's great for bone density. It has so many great traits but it doesn't do everything and I think that's one of the issues here people get so wed to their single training style that they want to convince themselves that it does absolutely everything that it possibly could and another myth that surrounds this kind of thing is the idea that you can boost your testosterone by doing squats and deadlifts and that this is going to result in greater muscle mass that boost in testosterone is a very temporary spike it doesn't stick around long enough to increase your muscle mass just like you get a boost in testosterone from playing an action game or having sex and these things aren't going to turn you into a bodybuilder and compound lifts might boost testosterone for a very short period of time but you'd get the same effect from doing a full body routine anyways for anyone who is interested in building a lot of size, I would highly recommend a more bodybuilding style program. Turning to Natural Hypertrophy's video for a moment, I do want to address another point he made that I personally, uh, I'm not really following because I don't think many people hold this view, but correct me if I'm wrong. He says that functional trainers and people who like functional training, all they really want is aesthetics and they're lying to themselves. They're ashamed of being bodybuilders and therefore they say that they're functional athletes. Well. First of all, I don't think functional training has a better um, reputation than bodybuilding, unfortunately. As you've demonstrated here, a lot of people hate functional training. In fact, I was kind of reluctant to use that term in my own marketing, in my own site. It's not all I do, by the way. I consider myself a cross trainer. Functional training is one aspect of what I'm interested in. You guys know I also train my brain and all sorts of things like that. But the point is that functional training isn't something you're gonna to wanna to say you do if you wanna avoid funny looks. And trust me, doing something like a Nordic curl in the gym, or even trying to find a space to do a handstand against a wall, 
that's not a great way to avoid you know the stares of people who think you're a weirdo functional training is is tricky and the idea that all we want is aesthetics is again i think misguided i think it's very easy to think about what you want and then assume that that's what everyone else wants as well he makes the point that I think, you know, obviously has some merit that if I had stick thin arms and a pot belly, nobody would watch my channel. I take the point that most functional coaches who rise to prominence on YouTube do have some kind of good physique, but this is A, because functional training does improve your physique. I made a video on um, functional aesthetics and why functional training and bodybuilding actually go very nicely together because functional training focuses on areas that even bodybuilders sometimes miss, such as the obliques, which can help to build, you know, a really nice, well-rounded physique, as well as using Metcon to melt away some fat. The other reason, of course, is marketing and YouTube algorithms. Yes, people are impressed by the looks, but that's not all they're impressed with. And an example of this is my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training 2.0, which you should check out in the description down below, by the way. That has been selling really well, uh, beyond all hopes and expectations, as did the last one. And the reason is not because of my physique. If you watch the trailer that Grant made that drives most of the sales, there's a small clip of me doing a double bicep pose right at the end. It lasts for less than a second. That's it. What I'm mainly doing is rolls and I'm swinging a club bell and a kettlebell and I'm jumping and sprinting. And this is just very dynamic. It's action packed and it's much easier for me to market. And it's those movements that people are watching and saying, that's cool. And I can honestly say myself that I'm more interested in those kinds of cool moves than I am in you know, bodybuilding and just looking good. Obviously, I like looking good and I like people to see me and know that I train and I enjoy the comments that I sometimes get. I used to get more when I was bigger. However, I'm much more impressed by someone who can backflip or can do a plant. I'm actually doing functional training for my channel. I have to maintain a certain level of size and definition to maintain my channel. And I combine this with the training that is specific to those moves so that I can help sell books. That's a form of functional training. There are actually plenty of functional coaches and calisthenics athletes out there who aren't super ripped and bulky and they still get a lot of viewers. I won't name them because that's gonna seem like I'm dissing their physiques, but I'm sure if you guys think, you can think of some that maybe aren't classically ripped and shredded, but they do still have big numbers. Also guys, I'm married, I have kids, I'm very happy, I'm not out to pull, so I'm certainly not interested in building a big physique in order to impress the ladies. In fact, funny story, my wife, before she met me and we started dating, said that she didn't like bulky men. She's actually into thinner guys, so there you go, it didn't help me at all in that regard. Aesthetics is great, obviously I'd like to look more ripped, but it certainly isn't a priority of mine, or I train very differently, and it's not a priority of a large majority of people. Those people who rise to prominence on YouTube who look particularly ripped, obviously there's a selection bias going on there and there is the fact that it's their job to do fitness, they're all gonna look pretty strong. And I know you said you don't like it when people say they didn't try hard. I did try really hard actually, but I also do have really good genetics. So I'm not gonna lie because I think that's disingenuous to my audience. It's relatively easy for me to put on mass and keep it on. So guys, I probably had more points to say. I'll link to the article that's gonna go with this video in the description down below. But I think the main takeaway points are this. Functional training is not an attack on other forms of training. It's just a useful label to describe things that we know. Yeah, the term can be a bit misapplied, it can be a bit vague, but when I say functional training, you guys basically know what I'm talking about. And the same goes for anyone else. And this is just a useful term, just like bodybuilding is a useful term and powerlifting is a useful term to describe certain types of exercise. It describes exercising for a function, and that function very often is to do with your professional sport, and that's where functional training really comes into its own. However, it can also just mean functional training for your life, and that means doing light mobility work and a little bit of strength in some areas that might get overlooked to prevent deterioration or to help rehab. It can also mean functional training that goes beyond that because we're allowed to have any function we want and a lot of people do enjoy just climbing stuff and jumping stuff and hitting stuff. And I think that was one of Natural Hypertrophy's gripes. He said that a lot of functional coaches, I think, you know, sound a bit high and mighty. Why can't they just admit they just want to do this for fun? Well, I always on this channel admit I'm just doing a lot of this stuff for fun. I want to be like Batman. It's not a noble aim. It's just the nerdy bit of fun. And I personally enjoy it so much. I don't understand why more people don't also want to move and run and sprint and jump, but some people don't. Just like some people aren't necessarily interested in aesthetics or numbers on their lifts. We're all different and that's great. And we can all learn from each other. To me, functional training often means incorporating different styles of training in order to get a more rounded type of performance. If you're a bodybuilder or a powerlifter and you have poor mobility or poor cardio, then adding a couple of functional exercises could help fix that. You don't have to, but it's something to consider. There's a distinction between calisthenics and movement training and functional training, which is a bit nuanced. The whole thing's a bit nuanced. And functional training is necessary due to the law of specificity. If you want to perform better in a particular activity, then you do need to do some exercises that specifically target those things. 
Functional training means different things to different people, but I think we all know there is a general consensus as to what it means. And I think it's a really useful and valuable approach that I'm not gonna stop talking about anytime soon. So thanks a ton for watching this one, guys. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Maybe you learned something. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree with me. What does functional training mean to you? And again, no hard feelings to natural hypertrophy. This video is very well made, agreed with a lot of his points, and I value these kind of discussions. Leave a like, share this video around. That helps me out immensely. Subscribe to the channel if you want more like this and hit the bell button for notifications. That helps me even more. And if you want to learn more about what functional training means and start applying some functional training concepts to your own training, then check out my ebook training program and over two hours of video tutorial by going to the link in the description down below for my Super Functional Training 2.0. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching this one and bye for now. And now a little bit about our sponsor, Squarespace. So Squarespace is a platform for building websites that makes it extremely easy and intuitive and ensures that anyone can do it. This kind of technology is exciting to me because it levels the playing field. It means that anyone can set up a business online and start earning money, get their message out there, raise awareness or whatever else it is that they want to do. And Squarespace makes it easy to make attractive, modern, and yes, functional websites thanks to its myriad of tools. So it has blogging tools for creating content, categorizing posts and scheduling publishing. It has member management with email communications and analytics. It has inbuilt e-commerce, which is a great way of generating some revenue. And you can extend this further with third-party plugins and extensions, which allow for things like management of global shipping, sales tax reconciliation, etc. It has social media integration, so you can integrate your social media with your website and push content directly to your site easy way to keep the content coming and plenty plenty more head to squarespace.com to find out more and for a free trial and then when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com forward slash bioneer link in the description for 10 percent off your first website or domain once again thank you so much to squarespace and thank you to you guys for sticking around to the end of the video it helps me out immensely and as a reward you get to hear me say bye for now twice bye for now